everyone. Good morning. Good morning. I pray that each of you are doing well this morning and are having an amazing start to your Monday thus far and amazing start to your week. I have to say that I have missed you all uh, since I took some time off last week. I had to take some time off to refresh and recharge. And so first, I do want to say thank you for um, those who covered for me while I was out. I know you all heard from Tori, who covered on Monday, uh, and then Carrie Lynn, who covered on Wednesday, and then also um, Kendra, who covered on Friday. So I want to say thank you to those ladies uh, for covering for me. And uh, I was I was trying not to. <laughs> it's funny because I'm supposed to be taking time to rest. I was trying not to peek in at the uh, the messages when they were live. But um, I did listen to a number of the messages after, afterwards, and I know that they uh, certainly were a blessing. So thank you again for covering for me and allowing me the time to rest. Had issues this morning going live, so right now I am, and let me just double check as I'm here. But right now I am only live from the group page. Facebook made some, some changes to the settings, I guess, over the weekend. And therefore, you can no longer live stream from third-party apps into Facebook groups. And, and therefore, uh, this morning I wasn't—I was trying to figure out this morning so I could still go live on all three pages, but uh, it, it's a little bit more complex than that. So uh, I will—I will—I—I I did see that there is a workaround. Uh, therefore, I will be up and running on YouTube again, especially uh, on Wednesday. So I'll try to work through the issues so that we can get up and running. But hey, Amy, great morning to you. Good to see you uh, as well. But because of that, I won't be able to be up here long this morning as I was trying to, to work through the technical issues. But I did want to make sure I came before you all to share uh, a quick word that the Lord has given me. But as always, if you're on with me, let me know that you are on. And then if you're catching this on replay, put hashtag replay so that we know that you were here. And then as always, I want to encourage you all to uh, share this post, share the group, let people know that we are here as well as like the post, comment, um, subscribe to YouTube if you haven't already. And then if you haven't, invite others to the group because this is a public group. Uh, and if you have friends and family members that uh, you think that this group will be a blessing too, and be sure to invite them and let them know that we are here. All right, so I want to talk this morning about, oh, sorry, let me open up in prayer before I go into the, the message. So, dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for who you are. And God, even this morning, I just rest in you. I know despite the technical difficulties and, and things that are going on, you are still God. So, Lord, I rest in you this morning, and I pray, Father, that even as we come together uh, to draw closer to you, Lord, that you give uh, me the words for your people. Father, that even as I speak, it's not just me speaking, Lord, but it's the words from your lips and the words from your heart. And I pray for every person that is uh, here, every person that is watching this video. Father, you know what every person needs. You know that the, the deepest desires of our hearts. So I first just pray, let it be done for them. But I also pray, God, that as they hear the word from your lips and from your heart, that their lives will never be the same. Lord, that they'll receive the word that you have for them. And not only <clears throat> will it be a word that they receive, but Father, a word that they walk in and truly embrace. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Um, I'm going to pull up, let me pull up the Facebook so I can see you all uh, as well. All right, well, let's get started this morning. Hey, Ashley, uh, good morning to you. I see you're on. So I want to talk this morning about deliberate joy. So we're going to go a little bit into deliberate joy. As I said, I won't be up here long uh, just because of the the timing, but I did want to spend uh, a few minutes speaking on this word that the Lord gave. And the scriptures that we're going to read this morning, we're going to focus on uh, two primary different scriptures, but we're going to look at Psalms chapter 32 and then verses 10 through 11, and then we'll skip over to Nehemiah. 
So if you can, if you're on with me, if you could put the scriptures in the chat so that those who are joining later uh, will be able to see the scriptures that we are covering and can see where we are uh, in our in our teaching this morning. All right, and it reads, and I'm going to read this morning. I'll be thank you, Amy. This morning I'll be reading from the Amplified Bible, or excuse me, Amplified version of the Bible, and it says, "Many are the sorrows of the wicked." But he who trusts in and relies on the Lord shall be surrounded with compassion and loving kindness. It says, be glad in the Lord and rejoice, you righteous who actively seek right standing with him. Shout for joy, all you upright in heart. I'll read it again. It says, many are the sorrows of the wicked. But he who trusts in and relies on the Lord shall be surrounded with compassion and loving kindness. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, you righteous who actively seek right standing with him. It says, shout for joy, all you upright in heart. So I want to break this down for a little bit. It talks. It first talks about how many are the sorrows of the wicked. So it's letting us know that when you are outside of, of Christ, when you are outside of the Lord, it's saying that there are many sorrows. Uh, and so it's saying that those that are wicked in heart, those who don't have a heart that's in pursuit of the Lord, that's, that's actively seeking him, um, even an upright heart, as it says. So upright heart, which speaks to a heart that's in right standing with the Lord. Is saying that those people who are in Christ, many are their sorrows. But then it goes to say, it says, but he who trusts in and relies, trusts in and relies on the Lord shall be surrounded with compassion and loving kindness. So letting you know that when you're putting your trust in the Lord, when you're relying on the on the Lord, you are surrounded with compassion and loving kindness. But I want to read verse 11, but it says, but be glad in the Lord and rejoice, you righteous who actively see right standing. Shout for joy, all you upright in heart. Now, I want to talk about this verse really quick because this is what the Lord was giving me this morning. Because we hear all the, we hear, well, I won't say all the time, but we hear about joy and about how we know that joy is one of the fruit of the spirit. So when you look at the fruit of the spirit, it talks about joy. And so we know that fruit, uh, joy is a fruit. We know that joy is, is from the Lord. And so if you're outside of Christ, if you're not in, in um, let me, I'll just say, if you're not in Christ, then you won't have joy. I talked about that with you all before, even in my testimony where a lot of times, many people confuse happiness with joy to where happiness can be based on, you can be happy and happiness can be based on circumstantial things, but happiness fleets. Meaning once that thing ends, it could be, hey, I'm happy because I got a new car. I'm happy because I'm with my friends. But then once that thing ends, the happiness leaves. And so you're back in the place that you were prior to. And so I always explain to people about how happiness, it fleets, it comes and it, and it goes, but joy is something that remains. You know, joy is present when you're in God. Joy is present regardless of the circumstance and regardless of the situation. And the reason why that is, and is because when you're in Christ, when you're walking with God, you know despite what I see, you know, despite my circumstance, you know that I'm kept by the Lord. You know that even, even, and speaking, even if my bank account may not reflect it, the Bible talks about how I am still prosperous, talks about how I'm still wealthy. And so, you know, and also knowing that God is my source. And so regardless of what may happen, Regardless of what I may see, I'm still rich in the Lord. I, my needs are still going to be taken care of. 
I am still a person who will walk and do the things that God has called me to do because he's already equipped me for it. Therefore, being that the physical, being that what you see is not your, I'll just say it like this, it's not your end all and be all because you're in Christ and you know that, hey, it's beyond what I see, which is how I can walk in faith. Being that, you can have joy. You have joy because it's, I'm still kept. Despite what is going on right now, despite the storms that I'm facing, I know that I can rejoice because my God doesn't sleep or slumber. My God takes care of every need. But here's the thing. In verse 11, what it talks about, it talks about how it's telling you to be glad. It's telling you to rejoice. It's almost giving you a command of what you are to do. And so you can see even here now, it say, be glad in the Lord and rejoice. And then it's also telling you even more. It's saying, and then it gives you more information about all those who are upright in heart. Shout for joy. And it's telling you to shout. And the thing is, what it's saying here is your joy is deliberate it means it's deliberate joy it means that you have to be intentional it means that it is a pulling from you and what that means is and this is what the lord was was sharing with me this morning as i was um, preparing to come before you all because sometimes we think that how do i say this sometimes in our pursuit of God, we think that these things are to be just given to us. Oh, I should just walk around and have this. Whereas I've talked about it before, even when it comes to praise, it talks about the sacrifice of praise. Because if you've heard that saying, basically what it's speaking to is you are praising and you are pushing through despite how you feel. And so knowing that even though I may feel that this situation is weighing on top of my head, I may feel that I'm not going to make it through today. I may feel that these, this, um, this situation with my family is going to overtake me. The Bible talks about the sacrifice of it because the sacrifice of it is despite how you feel. Because when you're in Christ and you know being in Christ, we, we have hope we see beyond and so knowing that even despite how you feel you're praising because that praise is to say lord i trust you despite what i see lord i have faith in you i'm walking with you despite what's going on and so even when it comes to the joy the joy again is deliberate it's intentional because it's beyond just what you see it's beyond just what's going on it's saying lord i'm going to rest in you god i have joy because i know i'm kept by you i'm saved by you and i know everything's going to be okay it's going to be for my good as so i want to skip to the last scripture today as we talk about this even further because then that's why when you go to the next scripture for nehemiah chapter 8 verse 10 it speaks to us says and do not be worried hey carrie good morning and good to see you uh, yesterday. It says, and do not be worried for the joy of the Lord is your strength and your stronghold. And so it's telling you even here, one of the things I like about when it was talking about joy, even for the first scriptures, it talks about, it It, it, it almost like positions it to talk about the, the negative at first. It talks about many are the sorrows of the wicked, but on the contrary, it's saying, but on the contrary, it's saying, trust in the Lord. And it goes on to say that, be glad in the Lord and rejoice. And then on this side, though, it's saying, and do not be worried. And so it's letting you know not to be worried. It's letting you know that don't be anxious. But it's saying that do not be worried for the joy of the Lord is your strength and your stronghold. And we know a stronghold is something that we a stronghold is almost something when I when I picture a stronghold, it's almost something that you intertwine yourself with. 
It's something that has a strong hold. It becomes your strength. It becomes your force field. And, and, and it's something that you almost like you bec becomes a part of who you are. And it's saying that the joy of the Lord. So the joy of the Lord is your strength. Knowing that that joy that comes from only deep inside that God gives becomes your strength and your stronghold. Meaning that that joy carries you through when things get hard. Meaning that that joy that you're latching onto is what you use in those moments when um, you, you feel like you can't make it in those moments where it's, this, this mountain and this situation I'm facing feels bigger than me. You latch on to that joy and you walk and you rejoice because, again, you rest assured knowing that you're kept by God. So I want to share this quick devotion this morning about deliberate joy. And the message for this morning is to know despite what you are facing Despite what you are going on, despite what you see, rejoice. Rejoice. Rejoice and, and, and know that I rejoice and be glad. As it says, be glad in the Lord and rejoice because you're knowing that, Lord, I already know that you've worked it out. God, I already know that your plan is better than my plan. I was even telling my sister, um, Carrie, that song right now. I was telling her yesterday about how... We always hear this scripture about how um, it's, it's in our weakness where God's strength is made perfect. And I hear that often and I try to embrace it at heart, but there's times where we want to seem like we have it all together. You know, how many of us are like that? There's times where it's like, man, I want to seem like I have it all together, right? <laughs> it's, and the thing that the Lord was sharing with me yesterday, even when it comes to, to different parts of my life, he was sharing with me, and we, we say this sometimes, but he said, you don't have it all together. <laughs> that was basically what the Lord was saying with me. He was saying, you don't have it all together, but it's okay. Because if you're in a place to where you can admit that you're weak, you know, if you can admit that, hey, this is a weakness of mine, He's, he was basically saying, that's how my, my strength can rest on you. Is because you can, you can then accept the strength of the Lord. Instead of being all strong, being one who, hey, I have it together. I have, you know, I'm, I'm doing this and that. But if I could just simply just take the heart. Because in order to say I'm weak, it takes a, a level of humility to say, you know what, I am weak. Lord, I'm weak in this area. I'm weak in my prayer life. God, I'm, I'm weak in consistency. You know, whatever that weakness may be for you, but when you can get to a place where you say, you know what, Lord, I need you. I, I, I can't do it all myself. Father, I, I don't know which way to go. Lord, I, I, I have an idea, but Father, I don't know. This is where I struggle. Then his strength can rest on you. In the moment that God showed me that in another part of my life, I then rested in him. I now have joy. I now have a place of peace that came upon me. It was like, honestly, like a blanket of peace that came upon me because I said, you know what, God, because I don't have every answer, I know you've placed me here. I know I'm supposed to be here for this season. I know that you've equipped me for it, but I may not have every answer to every situation that's going on. But Lord, I know that if I come to you with my weakness, then I know that your strength will be made perfect. I know that now I'm available to be used by you. I'm now available for you to carry this out the way that you desire. Because here's the thing. When we're in a place of strength, when it becomes about being strong, then it becomes about your will, your desire, and your way. Because when you see someone with strength, it's 
I know, oh, I'm, 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 you know, and, and I'm not speaking of in the faith sense, because in the faith sense, we do know, but again, faith that comes from the Lord. But I mean, when it becomes about you, when it becomes about you and you being strong and you knowing, then what happens is we start to steer on our path and not the path that God has set for us. Because there are times where God will give you instruction and things to do that won't make sense. There are times where the Lord will share a message with you, a word with you, he'll give you instruction. And it doesn't matter how many certifications you have, how many degrees you have, where it may have made sense on paper what you say to do, but yet what God says to do may be contrary to that. And if you're in a place of strength, you won't be positioned in humility and you won't be available to hear from the Lord because you'll think you know it all. You'll think you know it all. Just like even if you remember when um, Peter, this is the thing about Peter, when you, Peter's story, Peter was an expert fisherman, if you recall. And you remember when he encountered Jesus, how when Jesus told him to, Jesus told him to go back out on the boat and put his, his um, net in the water. And if you remember, even Peter had responded and he said that, um, Peter had responded and basically said that, I've been out here all night. <laughs> He's like, I've been out here all night fishing and didn't catch anything. And if you think about that, really what he was saying is, he's saying, well, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> I, I know exactly what I'm doing. This is an area where I'm an expert in, and I did it the right way. I did what I was supposed to do, but I was not successful. But yet the Lord told him, Christ told him to go back out there and put his net back in the water to catch fish. Now, if Peter was so busy in his way and in, in his strength and then peter would have said you know what this guy don't know what know what he's talking about and would have walked off and yet he would have missed his blessing because the thing we learn to know about peter is when peter was obedient to to christ and so when peter said okay i'm going to take this net I'm going to go out to the shore, just like the instruction Christ gave. And what we know happens is when he goes back out and he puts his net back in the water, then he ends up catching so much fish that the net began to break. If you remember, he caught so much fish, even more so that not only did the boat begin to sink, the net began to break, but then even the surrounding boats came so that they were even blessed with the abundance and the overflow that was given to Peter. But Peter would not have been able to receive that blessing if he wasn't in a place of weakness. If he wasn't in a place where he realized, and, and that's the thing, we know Peter had revelation given by the Father. He had a revelation to know, okay, I'm, even though I'm an expert at fishing, even though this is something that I do well, he had a revelation to understand, but the person who is speaking to me has a blessing that no matter what I may do, no matter how expert I may be, this person has a blessing that's only available if I submit myself to them. And knowing in the same way, there are some blessings that are only available through submission. There are some blessings that are only available in your weakness. So it's important be, being able to say, and I know the Lord took this, uh, this teaching this morning, the way that he desired to take it. <laughs> but we know that there is a blessing available in the ability to say, I am weak. In the ability to say, I don't know everything. I may be an expert in this area, but Lord, I understand that your way is the best way. God, I understand that your way is the right way. And a part of that too is even seeking the Lord. Lord, I'm seeking you because I know what I would do, but Lord, what is it that you desire for me to do in this situation? 
Father, what, what, is the, what is the path that I should take in this situation? And then allowing God to direct because then God knows you have a heart of humility. We know the Bible says that God resists the proud. How he resists those who have pride. And pride is basically when you're saying, I know better than. I know better than the Lord. I've done, think about the, the, the times where we've been, we've been prideful. Well, I've done this. I've had, you know, how many of us say that? I've had my back all my life. No one has been there for me. I've always had to have myself. But yet the entire time when you're saying that, God is standing there next to you saying, no, you didn't. You weren't always by yourself. You didn't always have your back. And even the Lord looking at us saying, there were times where you didn't have, you thought you did it for yourself, but what actually happened was the Lord opened up a door for you to have a blessing, for your need to be provided for, and it wasn't you at all, it was him. But yet the thing about pride is pride can blind us so much so where we take credit for things that we didn't even do. So that is our that is our teaching this morning um, around, again, knowing that joy is deliberate, is something you do, is something you embody. It becomes your stronghold because you know I'm weak. You know that God is my strength. I can rest in him. I don't have to have it all, but I have the one who does. I'm actively seeking and pursuing him. And in that pursuit, I know I can rest in him. So let us pray this morning. And if you have any prayer requests this morning, good morning, Makita. Good to see you. Hey, Sherelle. Uh, good morning as well. And others. Oh, hey, Jazz. Good morning to you uh, as well. But let us um, end in prayer this morning as we go before the Lord. If you have any prayer requests, please put your prayer requests in the chat. And as I said earlier, um, I will get the the live stream back up and going um, on Wednesday for the various pages. Uh, as I said earlier, I had technical difficulties this morning. But let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just, God, we thank you for this message and this word. And, and we first just repent for being prideful. God, we repent for acting like, acting like we know better than you. And even, Lord, for trying to bargain with you at times when you give us instruction and we're not obedient and we try to bargain our way through it. Lord, we repent and we, we recognize that you're, what you, the instruction you give, the things that you allow, the chastising that we receive is because you love us. And Lord, it's, it's also created to help us grow to help us to move towards the purpose and the plan that you have for us and so father we ask that you cleanse us of any unrighteousness that you purify our hearts this morning but lord we come to you even admitting that we have weakness lord coming to you to say we are weak <clears throat> we don't have all the answers but Lord, we know that you do. And we know that, as you say, you are a rewarder of those who diligently seek you. And so, Father, if we're diligent in how we seek you, we'll get exactly what we need. And even more, because you are the God of the abundance. You are the God of the overflow. And so, Lord, we come before you with a submitted heart so that we can receive from you. And so God, do the work in us. Do the work in our hearts. And even for those, who, those of us who struggle with pride, Father, do the work in us. Do the work in our hearts. And even, Lord, as, your, as pride stems from hurt, stems from disappointment. And so God, I ask that you help us to heal of those areas where we were disappointed, 
where we were hurt, where it has, where we, we didn't get the love that we needed. But Lord, one thing remains is despite what went on with our families, despite what went on in our relationships, Father, what remains is your love for us. What remains is your hand that has never left us. God, what remains is your goodness, your grace, and your mercy. And so we can rejoice in that. And I pray even now for those who have listened about deliberate joy and saying, well, I have a, I struggle being joyful. I struggle with that. Lord, maybe because of what they've gone through, what they've seen, what they've had to endure. But we thank you even now for restoring that joy, for removing the veil from their eyes that they can see the blessings from you, that they can see the goodness even in the midst of difficult situations, God, how there is a goodness from that, Lord, because we know that even when we encounter difficulty, Lord, that's you pushing us towards our promotion, God, that's you pushing us to a new dimension and a new realm in you. So, Father, we thank you for restoring their joy, restoring it even now. Giving them your peace that surpasses all understanding. That they will rest in you. And I just pray for those who are on, Father, those who are connected with this prayer. Even those who are asking for prayer. Father, you know the hearts of your people. You know what each person needs. So we thank you for doing it for them even now. Lord, and even letting us know that you hear us. You are a God who is so intentional. You let us know that you hear us. You let us know that you are there. So Lord, we know that you hear this prayer. We know that you are even touching the, the hearts and the wounds and moving in our situations moving in our lives right now. So we even just speak to the situations, those mountains that we're facing, that those mountains will move in the name of Jesus. We're speaking to every stronghold that's not a few. We pull them down. Well, we're speaking right now that your will and purpose for our lives will be done we will accomplish all you have called us to do and lord we're speaking financial freedom we're speaking financial freedom lord we're speaking healing in the bodies of the people here and even the families our families god we're speaking deliverance over the minds that are here we're speaking deliverance over our families And I just pray for strength and endurance to everyone who's here. Strengthen them. Strengthen them in their walks with you. Strengthen them in the places where you've called them to stand. And give them the endurance so that they may bear. And we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Well, thank you all for joining this morning. Uh, I pray that this message has bless you as it has blessed me this morning and uh, i just pray that you all have an amazing an amazing rest of your monday an amazing start to your week and we will be back on uh, wednesday morning for another morning devotion in prayer and as i said i'll have youtube and everything fixed wednesday morning uh, as we go live but love you all so much uh, and have an amazing day and i'll talk to you later all right bye